Good morning, everyone. This is Brother Dial from Fleming Island, Florida. I'm going to greet uh, you and everyone today in the lovely name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We're just thanking and praising Him for uh, what He's done, what He has accomplished, what He has revealed, what He has manifested uh, in our day. And in uh, one way you look at it, and uh, as Brother Ram talked about, um, a paradox is something that's unbelievable, but it's true. Well, that's exactly what uh, this this day is. It's a paradox. It is. It is so. Uh, to the to the world out there, it is so unbelievable that there's there's no way. But it, it's so unbelievable. But it's it's the tr it's the truth. It is true. It's what God has has done. He has fulfilled His word. I mean, to the letter, and and done everything He was supposed to do. And in the world, they're they're still looking for it. So you're talking about you're talking about a real paradox. Well, this is it. But uh, he said it's unbelievable, but it's true. Well, there's 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 people that are that are here that can receive the truth. And the reason they can, because they've been predestinated to it. I mean, Brother Ram, just as much as he said, he said, he said, all down through the ages, he said, started off with Eve and come right on through it. And every one of them, they got tripped up, trapped up, whatever. But he said, he said, this last day group, this bride, this wife, he said they will not. Why? Because they are predestinated to it. So, thank God for predestination. And so when he predestinates, he, pre he predetermines by his full knowledge and he's going to make everything work for that predestination to come to pass. And he has, just like he, he did in the ages before. There's always, no matter how much unbelief there was around, there was always somebody that could believe what God uh, was doing in the day that they were there. And they saw it, just a few, just a few, not a, not a big crowd, just a few. And so, God from the beginning, it's, and in Genesis said, God in the beginning created the heavens and the earth. And so, he had a special place for this earth. One, almost one of the smallest planets. And when he had all these great, big, huge planets and solar systems and everything else, but he chose this one little small place over here. So if that was God's program from the beginning, and Brother Nunn said he don't change, he, he chose the small. And if you come down through the history of the Bible, he always chooses the small insignificant. And I count myself as one of those small insignificant significant because it's not about me it is all about Christ and so that's what we're trying to get the people to see that it's not about you your group your church your this that no it is all about Jesus Christ and we're so glad that he has chosen us this day to be here to represent him let's pray Lord Jesus, we thank you again. Lord, how we thank you for uh, what you've done. And Lord, not only what you've done, but you've manifested it. And Lord, you've, uh, you've allowed us 
to see it, to be part of it, to be uh, the Word, the living Word for our day, Lord. So we thank you for that. We're so glad, Lord, that we are a part. And Lord, we want to do our part. We want to manifest the part that has been given to us. So Lord, and we believe that's what we're doing even to this day. That we are to, to tell, we have eaten the book and we're to tell, we're to prophesy again. So Lord, as we continue to do it, we pray that you'd get glory to yourself and the people would see that Jesus Christ is real. Jesus Christ is here. Jesus Christ, his word, he is the word, has been fulfilled. So Lord, we thank you for that. We give you praise now in Jesus' name. Amen. So, I want to take a, a subject this morning and uh, to give us a title, Living in His Presence. Living in His Presence. Well, if you're living in His presence, that means He's here. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So, and that's what we want to be dealing with as we read and as we study here with some scriptures and uh, with some statements from uh, the message that God has brought by his servant, William Branham. So I'm gonna, I've chose to read in Matthew 24, starting with verse uh, 26, and then I'm going to drop down way back to the back of the book and get Revelations chapter 4 and verse 1. So if you want to read along with us, let's turn to Matthew chapter 24, verse 26, and let's read. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the sacred chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning, and I always think about that word, uh, lightning, and uh, I don't think it's so much just talking about a, a thunderstorm and lightning coming up, but I, I think about lightning as illumination. And so as this lightning, as this illumination cometh out of the east, where, how did it come out of the east? Because that's where Jesus Christ had come on the scene as a man born of a virgin. And shineth even unto the west. Now what is it? This lightning, this illumination has come all the way from east to west. It said, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, the eagles will be gathered together. And I want to look at that word. It said, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Be. Now, this word coming here, if you go back and look it up in the lexicon and so on, it also means present. And this same word is used in, in different verses of the Bible as presence. Well, and so shall also the coming, the presence of, so when somebody comes, they're present. If they didn't come, they wouldn't be present. But if they did come, they would be present. And so this coming is a presence and of the Son of Man be. And the Son of Man, we come to find out, Brother Ram said it was a, 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 a revelation of Jesus Christ. A revelation, prophet, prophet, word. It's all about the Word, and the Word is Christ. And so he has to have a, a vessel to bring the Word because people think the Word is just out here floating around in the air. Well, the Word has to take on a form. In the beginning, God created. He spoke His Word. And, and there was a creation come along with that Word. It wasn't just the Word out there just floating somewhere. The word was spoken and it had to come to pass. It had to be a manifestation. 
So it's no difference down here. If he's to be the Word, the Word has to be manifested. We've said it many times before. You can, I could write on a piece of paper, M-A-N, man. Well, that is the Word man. But look here, that is not a man. This right here, if, if I got a word over here that says man, well, that is a word. But over here, that word man has become reality. It's been manifested. And that's where a lot of people, they say, oh, we got the word. We got the word. Well, look here. The word has to be manifested. And that's what the whole of the Bible is about. But most people, oh yeah, he come as a word. He absolutely did come as a word. And the word was made flesh. And the word has been made flesh again this day, but not to them. They're waiting for it to drop out of heaven somewhere. Now, I want to look over as we're reading here. Now remember, living in his presence. And let me drop this in before we go to Revelations 4. Brother Ram said in this day the scripture is fulfilled. He was talking about all the scriptures. He, he named them all. Revelations 10, uh, St. Luke 17, 34, John 14. All these scriptures that had been fulfilled. And then he just drops in and Matthew 24 is fulfilled. So every time you go back and read Matthew 24, just... Just, just know that you're reading about something that has been fulfilled. It's not future, it's past. And so where we're reading is past. It's happened. But all the word pertaining to Christ's first coming was manifested. And look here, we can go back and read about it, but if it says, Behold, a virgin shall conceive, she did, and he come forth, and had a life. And he also had a death. So that word was manifested and then all the word coming down through the ages has been manifested and we're here telling what has been manifested. Now, Revelations 4 and 1. And after this, I looked and behold a door and we found out from our reading last, last week that the door was Christ. Now, this here, where we're reading from, is after the church ages. Oh, people say, oh, after the church ages. Well, absolutely. So, and this is John because he said the church goes up after the third chapter of Revelation and don't come back to Revelation 19. So, here's John. He's been... He's been taken up and he said a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said, come up hither, come up here and I will show you these things which must be thereafter. Now, <clears throat> so he finishes the church ages and then he's going to show all these things and then we come to find out that all these things have been shown. But look here, it hasn't been shown if you don't if you don't believe it, if you don't receive it. If it's been shown and you're still waiting for it, well, it didn't didn't do you any good. But now, then we found out last week that after the church ages, John goes up and he was a type of every true believer. So here we got the type of John. Well, look here. John was on the Isle of Patmos, and he never flew off anywhere. He stayed right there. I think Brother Brown said about two years having these visions and writing the book of Revelation. So he's a type of every true believer that's been caught up. Now, I want to go to uh, the Revelation series here in 1960. And you get a statement from what Brother Brown said here. He said, Now John being, t John being taken up immediately after the church age was a type of the raptured church. And immediately after the church age is over, this Laodicean the Laodicean age, the church age, the seven church ages, the Laodicean age, is 
over, then comes the rapture. The church goes up like John did, into the presence of God. And that's what we want to talk about, living in His presence. So the church, they didn't fly off to another planet somewhere. They come to into the presence of God. Now, John was our type. And look at here, he was there in type. We're here in reality. John was seeing this in a vision, and we are his vision fulfilled because we're, we're here. We're real. This is a manifestation. This is not a vision. This is not a dream. This is real. Real people manifested in flesh becoming the word for their day and age. So, John go, the church goes up like John did <clears throat> into the presence of God. Oh my, whew, that just winds around my soul, around caught up at the rapture of the church. This place, the book of Revelation, was written at the end of the church age, and the end of the church age was 1960. And then we got people that we're here in, in 2022 and it, it'll never end for them because they don't have nowhere else to go. Now, let's go on. Now, <clears throat> I was talking about last, <clears throat> last week about this presence and I, I said there's only uh, where Brother Brown talked about the unrecognized, the presence of God unrecognized. So with that thought in mind, I went back to that message and that's where we're going to be taking our thoughts and our quotes from this morning. The presence of God unrecognized and that was there in Topeka, Kansas, 1964. Now this wasn't at the, this wasn't at the tabernacle. He had a whole series there, I think like maybe five nights or something. And it was just one of those gatherings that they had come together and you can imagine what a mixed group it was. Pentecostals and whoever more curious seekers and people just wanting to come there. Oh, I need to come there so I can be healed and this, that, and the other. So, but it don't make no difference. God was going across the country in the ministry and he was demonstrating the very presence of God. Now, let's read this. This is in, in the, the kind of the uh, first of the message. It says, now, the unrecognized presence. What could these people be thinking of? God has always, it's been that way every time he comes. When Jesus, what, it was every time he come, the presence wasn't recognized, amen. He said, now, when Jesus was here the first time, he said, well, you, you whiten and garnish the walls and, and the tombs of the prophets, and you put, you put them in there, see? Something happens and it passes by, and God hides it from the eyes of wise and the prudent, and reveals it to babes such as will learn. Jesus thanked the Father for doing such. See, it goes right by the people, and they don't know it. They don't know what? The presence of God, because it's unrecognized. Because they wasn't looking for, the, for God to come down. They was looking to go to a meeting and, and see something because they had no idea that Christ had come on the scene and he was come on the scene in a ministry, the word being made manifest. But they didn't know that. They thought, well, you know, whatever. But it was and is. So let's go a little bit further. Living, now living in his presence and we're living in his presence this morning. And we're going to find out how do you recognize that presence? Okay, and he, this is the very start of the message. Now listen to what he's saying here to this group here in Topeka. 
Now, while our crowds are small, we're going to try to hurry up and, and get out so we can. Working for this one purpose. Okay, this whole thing is going to be there in Topeka for this one purpose. For you to recognize the presence of Jesus Christ. See, if he is present, then why? Everything is settled. Well, praise God. If he's present, that means everything is settled. If he's present, everything is was it was settled then, it's settled now. Because why? He is present. He made the word. He is here to confirm it. He proves that. He will confirm it. He is just the same yesterday, today, and forever. We've seen him do it last night, infallibly. We see, we see him night after night, day after day, year after year. Never one time has he predicted anything regardless of when it was and when it would happen out of the thousands of times of what would perfectly on the dot, on time, right. How can it be? How many knows that and knows the ministry and knows that's true? The congregation says amen. Then you are not one time regardless how even impossible it happened just the same. He is God. And if we would just recognize that and take a hold of it. I mean, he just lays it out. Tells them to go back and check the ministry of all the, the, the predictions and everything else. How about catching a vision about the, the little boy over in Finland? And he sees a vision and he gets up and writes and, and tells everybody, write this in the fly leaf of your Bible. There's a little boy. He's been in an accident. He's been crushed. And we're going to pray. He's dead and we're going to pray and God is going to raise him up. And all of a sudden, one day they're over there in Finland, and they're just not even thinking about that. They're coming from one meeting, going to, and there's a terrible accident. And there's this, this little boy, he's been crushed. And they get out to see what happened. And they go over there, and Brother Brown says, Brother Jack, this, this looks familiar. He said, check your fly leaf in your Bible. He said, this is it. It's him. He said, if I pray for that boy, he don't get up. You can run me out of Finland as a false prophet. He prayed and the boy come back to life. How about that? And they say, oh, there's nothing to this ministry. That is the presence of Jesus Christ. But no. Just because, why? Just because it didn't, wasn't their man doing it. No, it was God's man doing it. That's what the thing is. Now, so if we could just recognize it and take a hold of it, that he's not coming, he's here. Now, let's go on with this presence of God and recognize it. He said, now, it comes in and goes out, and the people does not recognize it until it's passed. And they, because it never fits their theology. Why? Why? What's the reason? Because it don't fit their theology. He said, it never fits their time of day. No, because they're not looking for it now. They're looking for it over there. All these things is yet to happen. See, what is it? They've always living in the glare of another age. And now they're living in the glare of the Pentecostal, Laodicean age. That's all they can talk about. It's Laodicea, Laodicea. The reason they didn't accept Jesus because they were living in the glare of the law. And when Jesus came and was he was not contrary to the law, but he come to fulfill the law. Well, they couldn't accept him because his message wasn't exactly the <coughs> his message wasn't exactly the way they had it all created out. No. 
and it was called, call them traditions. And he didn't come according to their traditions. And let me tell you today, he don't come today according to their traditions. He didn't keep their traditions, and we don't keep their traditions, and that's what makes us an outcast. And, re and he really upset it and tore it and done things which was contrary to it, and so do we. Insomuch that they thought he was breaking up the churches and they couldn't receive him because of his message and <clears throat> we all know today that he come exactly in the line of God's prophecy, but they didn't know it. And it could happen again. Amen. Not only did it happen 2,000 years ago, it happened when he come this time. It could happen again. And we wouldn't know it, I imagine, if he would actually appear tonight, it would be so contrary to what we've got figured out on our charts and in our schools and things. It would be very few who would recognize what was going on. He said it would be like that, how he come. My, you're talking about nailing it down. And the people, they, they read these things. I guess they do. Maybe they do. You know, they don't even tell people to read anymore. If you, as long as you go to church, that, that's all right. And then they tell them to play a tape. And then when he says something a little contrary to what they all believe, they say, well, you know, I don't know about that. Don't know about it. Well, they say the same thing about the Bible. The Bible says this, and they say, well, you know, yeah. I said, you know, you don't read the Bible with a denominational interpretation. And that's the way, what, 99% read it? Oh, they, they read the Bible, and they've heard this old stuff for years and years and years, and it, and it just flows right through their mind as they're reading. Yes, amen. So, he said it would be that way, how he comes. Amen. So now. Now Jesus being there so scripturally identified by the scriptures and the scribes and Pharisees of that day could not recognize him. Now, is that true? Go back and read the, the gospels and he was all around the scribes. And they thought he was just a, a wild man and nut. Now, they couldn't recognize him. Why didn't they? Why didn't they do it? Because they had it figured out some other way. Well, that's what the problem is today. They can't, they can't accept this because they, have it, they got it figured out some other way. Some old church teaching, some old church age mentality, some old church age this, that, or the other. And when God come on the scene and took the wraps off of the Word and the Bible become a new book, they couldn't accept that. They might have said they did, but their, their actions prove that they did not. And so... <clears throat> That's where Jesus told them, search the scriptures, for in them, you, in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they that testify of me. See? Now, he come exactly with the scripture. Well, if he come the first time exactly with the scripture, don't you think he'd come the second time the same way? When it's predicted, we just read it, that it would be in the coming, the presence of the Son of Man. And they, and they look for everything but that, but for that. But they had it figured out, oh, how maybe he would come. The Messiah would probably do what Moses did or what Noah did, build them an ark or something else. But reason he come the way he did, they had it figured out in the scriptures with their traditions. 
That's why they, I don't care what he done, they could not accept it because he didn't come according to their traditions. Did not teach them. So the people were so confused that they didn't know what was going on. If that ain't a picture of 2022, look here, you tell this group the, the truth of what God has done, and it, you talking about a, their mind top their head blowing off. Because they, they said that's the craziest thing I've ever heard of. Well, that's what these people thought back 2,000 years ago. But it was the truth. It was a paradox. It was so unbelievable, but, but it was true. They, would, they didn't want some peasant messiah. They wanted the great king going to come on the white horse. No, that was going to be later on. They wanted the king to come on the white horse to beat all the Romans down and set up the kingdom. That was not to be. But that's what they were looking for. So, <clears throat> so that's how it is today. Now, wonder if that could happen today. I'm, he's wondering, and he's wondering right, because it not only could, it did. I wonder if that could be different from what our tr traditions has taught us. And it would come and something would pass through and we never uh, even know it until it's already passed and it's over. And that will be just about the way it will come and has. Now, what's going on down there? What's going on up here? Compare with what Jesus said, never broke in history. Have we ever set and the sign, same signs that would be done, don't you realize, friends? And, and recognize it's God come down? Oh, no, no, He ain't come down. We're waiting for Him to come down. The unrecognized presence of Christ. Don't you realize that, that God come down in the gospel in His people were living in His presence because His presence is living in us. Making Himself known. Can't you realize the hour that we're living in? Have we got ourselves off to clap our hands a little bit and play the piano and recite this and got away from the Word till we're that blind to it? Surely we're not. Let's recognize the hour that we're living in. Remember, he's telling the people this in a, a mixed crowd, 1964. And we're over here 50 something years later, and people just look around like, whoa, what, what are they talking about? That's not what my pastor said. That's not what my church believes. Hmm. Let's recognize the hour that we're living in. Well, look at here. Let us recognize the hour that we're living in. All of these things are past and fulfilled, and we're here to tell what God has done. Not what He's going to do. Now listen to this. Peter or Nathaniel rather, the woman, they recognized it. They recognized his sign, his Messiah sign. Well, what was his Messiah sign? He knew the very thoughts and intents, the secrets of the heart. Well, we've seen that sign over and over and over and over again. If that was a sign in that day, that would be his sign in this day. But not to these people. Oh, that was just a little gift he had. Amen. It was a little gift. It was a gift to prove that the Messiah was on the scene, living in the presence of Christ. Yes. Same as it is these days, I'm saying, then to this age, Jesus said, now watch, and he is referring back, telling them of that of an age. God at any age when He sent His 
sent his message, which was his word, and identified it to that age, the people that believed it, it was a great time. Amen, hallelujah, amen. The people that believed it, amen, it was a great time. There was a brother sent me a note. He said, Brother Dial, he said, oh, he said, this word, he said, this word has got me so stirred up. He said, I am so happy. He said, I, he, he said, I don't even know how to explain it. The people that believe it, it is a great time for them. The people who did not believe it went into chaos. And just look around. Chaos. And that's where the whole bunch is, in chaos. Now, Living in His presence. The presence of God unrecognized. One day the disciples asked Him, Why did the scribes say that Elias must first come? Jesus said, He has already come and you didn't know it. And they understood that it was John the Baptist. Those elected apostles still couldn't see who he was. That was the Elijah. That just shows how God's Word can, can come in and be fulfilled and everybody miss it. And that is exactly what has happened this day. Everybody, but look at here. We had something that they didn't. Look here. That they were with Jesus and they were not converted yet. Then after Pentecost, they could see all these things because now they had been born again. They had the presence of Jesus Christ not standing around them, but they had the presence of Jesus Christ on the inside. The teacher, the revealer, the whole thing. And it made the difference. Now look, you know, the coming of the Lord is going to be a secret coming. Amen, brother? If it ain't a secret. And look here, you tell them the secret and they won't have it. So it's going to be a secret. He said there'll be two in a bed and I'll take one and leave one. And he said that is where the night and two in the field and I'll take one and leave one. And it's a universal coming. Because he just gave us the thing. He said, there'll be two in a bed. It's nighttime. There's two in a field. It's daytime. It's universal. Because over here it's night. Over there it's day. Over here it's day. Over there it's night. So the coming is universal. One time a fellow told me, I was talking about, you know, Brother Ram said the rapture so would take would take place some morning between 6 and 9 a.m. He said, yep, that's exactly right. He said, that's the time zone of the United States. He said, because when it's 9 o'clock on the east, it's 6 o'clock in the morning on the west. I said, no, no, no. That's, that, it wasn't just a rapture for the United States. It was a, a universal rapture. See how people can take something so simple as that and muddle it all up with their intellectual mind? And, and not only do that, they do the rest of it the same way. Now, he said now, and if you're acquainted with the Word, you'll see it. That's what the trouble is. If you are acquainted with the Word, you'll see it, for he has an he that has an eye and an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the church. You see now today, which was identified. He identified himself properly to the believers of that day. Them who were looking for it, look at Peter and Andrew and Nathaniel. No question in their mind. Look at the woman at the well. There was no question to it. 
You see what they was? He said, you are blind, leading the blind. They won't come in? Now listen. They, the ones that can't see it, they won't come in and neither will they let them that's under them come in. Huh. See that all the time. They go back and ask their pastor about these things and he said, oh, phew, that's false prophecy. Don't believe such stuff as that. And so they take his word. Of course they should. And they just what happens. They miss Christ. Now, he dwells in his word. And his words comes into your heart. Well, who is the Word? What is the Word? It's Christ. So He dwells in His Word, and His Word comes in your heart. So we say, well, I've got Christ in my heart. Well, if I've got Christ in my heart, i got the Word in my heart. Because Christ is the Word. And it speaks itself out and declare. He interprets His own Word through you. So, if there's a word for this day, how's it going to get interpreted? It's going to be interpreted to you, and he interprets his word by bringing it to pass. That is his interpretation. That's the only end. Not just since somebody gives some lip service to it, but it has to be manifested. And he is trying to find somebody he can get a hold of to show that he is still God, see? And he is, and he will do that if he can just get somebody he can speak to. If he can get another woman with a blood issue, he can still speak the same. He can do it, do the same, making known, declaring we're in the presence of God. And look here, not to recognize it, we're in the presence of God. Well, how could you be in the presence of God and God not be here? And God not come down? And God not do the Word and manifest the Word for the day and the hour which it was supposed to be manifested? But I don't know how. I don't know how to answer these questions. They just put them off. It's like everything's in the future. Oh yes, Brother Branham, he was here and he had a he had a he had a wonderful, wonderful uh, ministry. Look here, it was more than wonderful ministry. It was a ministry of the Son of Man. In the day which the Son of Man shall be revealed, made known, declared, the Son of Man is the Word, and the Word comes to the prophet, and the Word is God. Manifested Word. Everything that was supposed to take place has taken place. But not, not to them. Now, listen to this. He said, now I stood in South Africa where I had some 200,000 people there at the Durban racetrack. And when they seen one time that happened like that, after explaining it to them just in a little mild form, they seen one thing take place. Just one, just one thing. They seen one thing take place, oh, that revealed, and 25,000 people was instantly healed at once. Just one thing. They taken seven van loads of trucks as long as here, six and eight wheelers, and piled them up full of old crutches and things. Heathens didn't even know which was right and left hand. Just done one thing, and we had it over, over, going from this city to this city to this city, calming, calming not only the world, but the United States from east to west, from east to west, manifesting the Son of Man, and the people just, well, that was really <coughs> Now, 
Now listen to what he said about this. Why? They recognized the God of heaven had appeared before them in the form of His Word. Ah, they recognized that. These just blanket natives. Uh-oh. The Word made flesh. And that's what Brother Brown said. They said, no, we don't want missionaries. We've had missionaries over here for hundreds of years, and all they could talk was just an intellectual scripture and so on. And look at here. This, he wasn't a missionary. He was on a mission to bring them the presence of Christ and did. And when he did, they recognized it. And now listen to what he says. And they, when they recognized the God of heaven had appeared before them in the form of his word, and listen, and we intellectual Americans sit, they'll raise in the day of judgment and condemn this generation for what we've seen. They've seen it one time. And this is your time. They've seen it over and over and over Again, and they hear about it over and over and over again, and it takes no effect. That's the way the church is getting. God has shook every promise in the Bible before them. Now listen, they saw it one time, and they recognized who it was, and they draw the benefits. And he said, that's the way the church is getting. God has shook every promise in the Bible before then. Still, we just sit and stare looking what? Show me a sign, will you? And it's going on all the time. They're talking about show me a sign. And the sign is going on all the time. What sign? It's the sign of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, back on the scene. The presence of God. And here we are living because we have recognized that we're living in the very presence of Christ. The Word made manifest. How could you live in the presence of Christ and do away with the Word? How could you live in that presence and that presence not manifest the Word? It did in that day. Well, well what is that day different from our day? And it's going on all the time around us, bringing the presence of God. It ought to illuminate us. What did I talk about? As the light comes from the east, lightning, illumination. Well, it ought to illuminate us when God made a promise and He stands by that promise, yes, sir. After Jesus had so proven His Messiah sign that, that He was that Messiah, yet in the face of all of that, show us a sign. They didn't recognize they were staring, staring straight ahead of them. It wasn't in them to believe. Now, do you see what the problem is today? It's not in them to believe. They say, well, why are you talking? Because I am to be a witness. God has always had a witness in the earth. Now, they still don't recognize him. They are so blinded by their creeds. What blinds them? How was Laodicea blinded? By their creeds and by their traditions. And so forth that they had that day. They never knew the scriptures of the promise because the creeds had covered it up. That's what they tried to do over here. But God come down and took the cover off. 
where we could see the Word. He called it the unveiling of Christ. Well, if you unveil Christ, you unveil the Word because Christ is the Word. Their creeds and traditions of that day had covered up the Scripture promise. And if they had been taught according to the Scripture that was supposed to be the sign that followed the Messiah. And look here. We've been taught to recognize the Word manifested, His presence. We've been taught to recognize the Word manifested, Word, His presence. But look here. Everybody is not taught that way. Most people is taught contrary. When you go to talking about, really about the presence of Christ and Him come on the scene and Him fulfilling His Word, oh, it scares them to death. They get all shook up. And they are to. Because the very thing they're looking for is the thing that they are rejecting. Now, the presence of God, unrecognized, living in His presence. Well, look here. We've recognized it and we're living there. We enjoy it. It's a great time. Now, when He is not... Now, look here. So... When he is not recognized, his power is always not revealed. And they wonder why. Well, how come the church don't have no power? This is about a powerless bunch as I ever seen. Well, it's simple. When he is not recognized, his power is not revealed. When he is not recognized, no matter how much God is standing present, you've got to believe it. That's what happened 2,000 years. Look here. God was standing present. And the ones that recognized that got what they wanted. The ones that rejected it went to hell. How about if you could bring that, that soldier that drove the nails in his hands this morning, if you could bring him back and let him testify, I guarantee he could tell you a story. But no, his day is past. And so are all these other days past. Look here, you got one chance to accept and repent and do what's right, and that's why you are here. When you pass beyond this, it's over. But he said, now, God is standing present. Well, he's standing present then because they're waiting for him to come. He's standing present manifesting his word. The very God of heaven come down and he's veiled himself in that little prophet. God took on a veil just like He did with Moses and Elijah and David and all the rest of them. And you've got to believe it. That's all. Now, like the woman with the blood issue. All of them passing by and all of them standing up and saying, Oh, there, there goes Rabbi. There, there's that guy that claimed to be a prophet. Well, this is that fanatic and all such as that. But what happened? You, know, you don't think she heard all of that? You don't think we have heard all of that? But what happened? That little woman had a blood issue and she had heard about him. And when she come down there, regardless of what anybody said, she recognized who he was. And look at here, glory to God. So has this little woman, the wife of Christ, so has she recognized who he is. And she said, if I can only touch his garment, see? <clears throat> and you know the story. She touched it. And Jesus said, who touched me? And Peter said, well, well look at here, Lord, everybody's touched. He said, no, I'm not touched with a special touch. He said, I felt virtue, I felt strength go out of me. And he looked around, and the little woman, he said, yep, 
by faith and saved them. Immediately, the blood issue stopped. Why? Because she recognized who he is. And he's not was. He's always is. And that the people this day could only recognize that. Now, now he says, if we could only do that tonight, people, if we could only realize that he is appearing, now look, he's talking to a group of people there in Topeka, Kansas, 1964. But the word didn't stop there. They had to recognize it, and we have to recognize it. Every person has to recognize it. If we can only do that to people, if we can only recognize He's appearing to us in these meetings for one purpose, that's to release our desires that we have in Him to us. But we've got to recognize His presence. And how you're going to recognize His presence is when the promised word for that age is made manifest. Not the promised word for Moses' age or any other age. The promised word for this age. Now, how do you recognize its presence? When you see the promised word for the day and the hour in which you live made manifest, that is His presence. That same one, when he was on the cross, said, If thou be the Son of God, come off the cross and prove that you're the Son of God. He could have done it. They paid him the greatest tribute he ever had. But they didn't know it. They said, He saved others. Himself he can't save. If he would have saved himself, he couldn't have saved others. He gave himself to save the others. See, they didn't recognize the presence of God. That's all. How about that? God. The presence of God. God hanging on the cross and them jawing back into it him. And he just not opened his mouth because he wasn't supposed to. He just looked at like a little sheep before his shears and just said, whatever. No defense wasn't supposed to have because he had to die. And they're the ones that caused it. You know, the Bible says, well, offenses must come, but woe to them which they come by. So you're going to always have mockers and scoffers and people calling names and everything else. That's always going to be that. But woe unto them that do that. Because, I was thinking down there, you know, you don't have to worry about it. When somebody wrongs you, we forgive them and say, Lord, I forgive them. They don't even know what they're doing. I forgive them. But you know, God will recompense. That's why you just take it off and say, put it over here on Jesus. And everything's going to be all right. And you don't know, you don't know what's going to happen to that person. Later on down the road, it might be 10 years, it might be 20 years. And all of a sudden they come up and they're in this terrible condition, in this shape and so on. And you didn't have nothing to do because you forgive them. But God's got a record. And thank God our record was put in the sea of forgetfulness. We have been totally forgiven. Not only forgiven, we have been justified. There's a difference. Amen. Hey, Brother Brown said, look here, you can forgive me, and if I did it, I've done it. But he said, justified is like I've never done it. Praise God. That's what God can do. Amen. Now, let's see where we're at here. Okay. Uh, so, how to recognize His presence? How to 
don't recognize it. When the promised word is made manifest, that's how you recognize it. Now, now it releases the power to heal. And what? It will release the power to open your eyes to recognize Him. Or blind your eyes so you'll never recognize Him. What opens the eyes of one closes the eyes of the unbeliever. So, now it releases it what? To recognize His power. You, you know what's the trouble today. There was people, many people, and with the people that belongs and just go to church and have a creed, and they say, well, there, there's so much just faults and so much statues and so much uh, big, fine buildings, and, and they'll never let get off of the, that kind of a tantrum. See, God don't dwell in big buildings. Uh-oh. He dwells in the human heart. His presence dwells in the human heart. God don't dwell in intellectual education. Well, my goodness. He is far from it. He dwells in humility in your heart. Christ. Well, look at here. The way that he's dwelling, most people don't want that. He dwells in his word. And his word, look here, and his word is Christ, for Christ is the word. And he comes, his word comes, the presence of Jesus Christ comes into your heart. No. They think he's coming out of the sky somewhere. Because that's what they've been taught. He comes into your heart and speaks itself out and declare he interprets his own word through you. He said that twice. He interprets his own word through you. In other words, the word that's written for your day and the hour, he brings it to pass through you. Because the Word has to be made flesh. And he is trying to find somebody he can get a hold of to show that he is still God. Trying to find somebody that he can get a hold of to show that he's still God, see? And he is, and he will do that if he can just get somebody that he can speak to. If he can get another woman with a blood issue, blood issue that he can speak the same thing, he can do the same thing, make it known, declaring we're in the presence of God. So he's trying to find somebody. Can he find you? Are you a candidate for that? That he can speak to, make himself known to? That he can bring you into the presence of Christ? The presence of God? Now look. I claim that these scriptures must be fulfilled that I have read and sh showed you these past two nights what Jesus was, what His presence is now. The presence is when we see the Word manifested. And He is supposed to return in the last days. We know that through, the, through human flesh. Oh, he's supposed to return. And as soon as they say that, they're looking for Jesus about 2,000 years ago to drop down. He's supposed to return through human flesh and declare himself the same way. Well, did he do it? Did he do it through the ministry? Did he do it? 
Then did one time Brother Branham ever take the credit? He said, it's not me. He said, I am your brother. I am just near when he does these things. Jesus said, it's not me that doeth the works, but my Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. No man can know the secret of the heart. No man can heal another. No man can raise the dead. It is God that does those things. But he does it through a man and they get so confused. They go, whoa! If they would just only go back to the Word and see what the Word says and believe what it says, and they would see that God has to have somebody here to manifest Himself. He did it from the beginning. He said, Moses, I am come down. I am sending you. Well, that wouldn't have... If He had come down as that great pillar of fire and roared into the uh, Pharaoh's hall... What do you think they would have done? They say, "Whoop! What do you want?" But no, he wasn't going to do it like that. He sent some old eighty-year-old man, whiskers hanging down, bald head, and everything else, and sent him a shepherd with a crooked stick and said, "Let my people go." And they said, "Ha ha ha!" They just had a real laugh about that. But. They didn't know that in that old man, the presence of God was there. And before he got through, they knew that they had, <clears throat> that they had dealt with Almighty God. See how simple things can be? And so this day, he sends what? He sends a little man. Little man. Not some great big giant of man. A little man. Uneducated from a bad family. Bad name. Bad everything. And what did he do? He got in that little man. And he manifested the word for this day and age to bring Jesus Christ on the scene that we could recognize that we were in the presence of God. And it wasn't to the world, it was to the believers. They believe it. The other ones don't have anything to believe with. So how good God is to us to give us so many blessings and take care of us, reveal Himself to us, to bring us right into the presence of God. Look here, right into the inner circle. Not on the outside fringe, I mean right in the very midst. So he's supposed to return. In the last days, and we know through human, human flesh, to declare himself the same way. And we know that, and we are aware it. Stay amen. Congregation says amen. All right. Now, for your comfort, I say you. I say this to you, in His name, He is here. In His name, look here, I'm not speaking in my name. He said, I'm speaking in His name. In His name, I'm saying to you, in His name, He is here. We are in the presence of Christ. And I don't see where He said, well, you know, He's here, but He's going to leave. He is here, the same God that down there and talked to Abraham and had his back turned to the tent and, and Sarah inside the tent. He knew what she was thinking. And he's done that. He called that the Messiah sign. That was a manifestation back there, the Son of Man. That was Christ that knew the very thoughts and intents and knew exactly what Sarah was thinking in the tent behind. He said, where is thy wife Sarah? Well, how did he know he had a wife? And how did he know her name? And plus her name had just been changed from Sarah to Sarah. But no, people, that just goes over their head. And then Jesus Christ comes on the scene. He does the same thing. And then He's to, to return back as the Son of Man. And He does the same thing. It's just a different body. 
You would think people could catch that, but no, huh? They're looking for the body of 2,000 years ago, and anything less than that they will not have. But they can't have that because that day is past. This is the word for our day, for our hour, and we are here telling what God has done, and we are living in the presence of Jesus Christ, the word. Not some, not some historical God, not some future God. We're living right here in the presence of God, the manifested Word. And then look here, if you're a believer, this, you are part of the Word. You have to be the Word. Because there's, He's not taking a, a creed or a tradition. He's only come for His Word. Amen. So, what do He said, those that recognize it's a great time. It is a great time. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a great time because we recognize that God has fulfilled His Word. And we are telling both near and far to all that will believe. If He could just find somebody, well, maybe you'll be that somebody today. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you today. Lord, how great it is to know where we are, know who you are, know where you are. You're not floating on a cloud somewhere. You're not off somewhere else. You're here. You're dwelling in us. You live in the human heart, and you direct us. You are the control tower. You are the controlling one. You are the revealing one. You are that one that comes on the inside to lead us and guide us and show us and reveal to us what you have done in our day lord we so appreciate and thank you we give you praise and glory and honor this day lord may you accept all our praise it all about jesus christ lord we recognize you as almighty god and we give you praise and we thank you for it in the name of jesus christ amen